Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today you are going to learn how to sell your work to a publisher, okay? There's a couple reasons why this topic is coming up. One, a lot of you who I've been talking to are getting ready to or just started to shop your manuscript to publishers and you don't want to do the self-publishing route and that's fine you know you don't have to do that the second reason why i'm doing this is because starting poetic anarchy press there is going to come a time in the near future where i'm going to start wanting people to submit manuscripts okay so this is kind of like a two-prong thing like this should help you sell yourself to companies and it should also help you sell yourself to me in doing that i think um everyone will be happy you know but i'm, I'm gonna come right out and say it like poetic anarchy press probably isn't for everyone and i completely understand that and i'm not trying to say send me your stuff but i think the lessons that i'm gonna go over right now are very helpful for anyone doing anything whether it's selling your manuscript, selling a used car, or selling yourself to a potential partner. You know what I'm saying? Because we all know a date is really a job interview. Let's just cut to the chase here, folks. Now, there are two things we're going to talk about here today. I probably should break this up, but I feel like they are so connected that we have to do these things together. The first thing is if you've been in any kind of business classes or advertising classes or marketing classes or anything like that, you need to know what your USP is, okay? Now, now we're talking business jargon here, and I hate doing it, but in this sense, I think this is helpful for people, okay? Especially artists, especially artists, especially writers. Because for some reason, as soon as we start talking business, like, we immediately go, whoa, 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 you know, and we have this weird thing, and we should never have that. This is what we do. This is what we offer the world. This is our contribution to society, to culture. We're allowed to ask people to compensate us for that thing. You know what I'm saying? Shouldn't be a dirty thing, guys. It shouldn't be. There are, there are plenty of other dirtier things out there that we all take part in every day. This does not have to be one of them, okay? So your USP. Now, this stands for unique selling point. So you have to figure out what, again, I don't like using this, but you as a brand, what is your USP? What is your unique selling point, okay? So for me... Mine would be, I write real gritty, hard-ass <coughs> poetry for motherfuckers who don't give a fuck. <coughs> I write poetry for people who don't read poetry because there are more people out there who read that don't read poetry than people who read poetry. I am bridging the gap of bringing new readers into poetry. I write poetry for the people, and you don't need a degree to be able to understand what the f I'm talking about. Okay? That's my USP. Your USP is supposed to differentiate you from everyone else out there who does the same thing. Now, are there people out there who do what I do? Of course there are. I just do it better. So I'm just going to say it like that, right? Okay. Okay, so now that that's said, and we know what our USP is, like, think about you. Think about what you write about. Think about what you give to the reader, okay? Now, I know a lot of you thinking this right now are going to be like, I, I don't I don't know. I just, I just write poems. You are so much more than the poems you write. The poems are an extension of you, okay? So don't ever sell yourself short that you all you are is your poetry. You are bigger than that. And this is kind of in response to a live stream I saw somebody do here quite recently. 
asking if anyone else out there is large. Now, we're not talking about around the waist, okay? We're talking about larger-than-life motherfuckers, okay? And somebody said something to me that kind of blew my mind, and I never, ever saw myself this way. And they said, and to be fair, this was in a fight. <laughs> it wasn't in like, like, oh, here's a compliment for you. It, 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 was a, it was an argument. And this person said to me, you are a gas. And at first I thought they said a gas. Like I was like, <gasps> but that's not what they said. And then I realized that I wasn't talking to someone from fucking 1952. And it was the current year. And I was like, oh, this isn't a compliment. <laughs> So I'm sitting there and I'm like, uh-huh, continue. They're like, you completely fill whatever space you're in. If you are in, like, talking about, like, gas as a, as opposed to liquid or as opposed to a solid. Do you guys see what I'm saying here? When I am put into a room, I fill that room. If I'm put into a car, I fill that car. If I put into a movie theater, I fill that movie theater. You guys see what I'm saying? So I am a gas. And I guess when you are pushing your sh and selling yourself and doing all this stuff, sometimes you have to be a gas. Even if that is going to <laughs> just be large. Just be large, people. Just be large. Just be large. Okay. And you know what? And some of you out there, like, feel like you can't be large, you know, and it's kind of not in you to be large. There's that whole line that people say, fake it till you make it, okay? I, I would say fake it till you believe it, you know what I'm saying? And then you're fine. Bit of a sidetrack there. So now that we're understanding what our USP is and um, how we can differentiate ourselves from the marketplace, okay, once we have this figured out, we need to start thinking about how you take your USP and sell this to the publisher who's wanting to put your book out. This is very simple, just a couple things you have to do that for some reason I feel like a lot of people word salad when they're putting together like their sales pitch and everything. And it's really not that difficult what you need to do and what you need to explain to someone who's about to put money behind a project of yours. And again, if this is how you want to do it. Because you could also just do this directly to the customer. Okay. You need to think about the commercial value of your work. Now, a lot of you are going to be going, this is disgusting. I don't want to do that. Why, why would I do that? I'm an artist. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I agree with you. You are an artist. But there are people out there who sell art of all different kinds, whether it's music, film, TV, movies, I already said that, books, poetry, novels, porn. When someone is going to try to sell that for you, they need to know what the commercial value of it is. And I guarantee you right now, if you already know what your commercial value is, and you can talk apples to apples with a publisher, they're gonna be way more likely to take you on. Even if they don't really believe in your project as much. But here's the thing, as you are talking to them, you're going to sell them on this, okay? You are going to make them go, oh, this is a great idea, we need to do this. And the best part is, is when you make them think it's their idea to do it in the first place. You need to know what the commercial value of your work is. Then you have to be able to explain to the publisher how them putting out your book is going to help them, how it will benefit them. And then finally, how your book with their company will benefit and complement their catalog. Okay their back catalog because I don't know if you know this but when publishing companies put out their catalogs that they send to the buyers at the big stores and all they're talking about their new books that are coming out you know and like oh here's this book you need to get this book but on that page there will all, there will also be like this book pairs well with these other books in our catalog. If you have sold a lot of this book, this book 
this new book will sell well too. If like people who also bought this book will buy this book. It's almost like a print version of an Amazon algorithm. Okay. So you have these things. Okay. So you know your commercial value. Okay. You explain it to the publisher. You then explain to the publisher how this will benefit them. And then you explain to the publisher how it will bolster their back catalog. Okay. If you can nail these three things in a meeting with a publisher, you're fucking golden, okay? Now, if somebody took the time to explain to me why they think their book would fit in with my catalog, that would make me feel like, oh, this person is actually doing homework. They have some sort of semblance as to what to do with this instead of them just sitting back waiting for me to sell a million of their books, 100, whatever. For instance, if you wrote a book of poetry that is about motorcycles, you can talk about your USP here that you like are the only poet that's writing about motorcycles and that People who ride motorcycles, like, do some research. Find out how likely people who ride motorcycles are to read. Find out any kind of information you can about people who ride motorcycles. Like, do they hang out in coffee shops? Do they hang out at Barnes & Noble? This might be the worst analogy I ever came up with, but let's try to make this work here. And then you say, and then on top of that, like... We have this like free spirit, wind in the hair kind of thing, like with my poetry and with the readers who would love this. But we can also like all the bike shops across the country, we can have like special displays put in there where we're selling them, like selling the books face out to a customer base who's really interested in that. Okay. So say something like that. But then, also, if like you're pitching this motorcycle poetry book to a publisher that only puts out like I don't know nonfiction about aquatic life around Antarctica, you fucked up. That's not going to work. You need to find places that do the sh that you're doing and that you your stuff could help them out. So if you found a publisher who has a book, a poetry book about hot rods, you know. That's a like audience. If you found a publisher who has a poetry book about mountain biking, that could be a like audience. And so, like, if those other books have done well for them, this motorcycle poetry book is now a shoe in. You see what I'm saying? Like, you have to figure out ways to make them see you as something that stands out above the pack. And having an understanding of their business. That's really big, you know? So here's an example. Like, if you have a theme of your poetry, and again, this doesn't have to be about poetry, but I'm kind of focusing on this for a reason. So if you, let's say, you have a theme that you're writing a lot of poetry about, okay? It's just something that you're into, okay? Start going to places that are about that thing and see if they have any books there. Because a lot of these places don't have books, okay? Some places do, and they'll have, like, a little thing by the counter, like, oh, impulse buy. And that's really awesome. You see what I'm saying? So figure out what your audience is. Figure out what your market is. So when you talk to a publisher, you guys are on the same team already. Because I feel like what a lot of things happen between a writer and a publisher is that a writer looks at a publisher is a necessary evil, but also the person who holds the keys to my future. When in actuality, you two need to work in tandem to make the best product possible and sell the most books possible, okay? It's it's not this evil stepdad, but God damn it, he's paying for the Christmas presents, you know? Like, it's a beneficial symbiotic relationship and a lot of times i feel like there are some editors and publishers who feel like writers are the necessary evil because they come in with ridiculous demands 
and they have nothing to offer except the work and then feel like they're like, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to deal with that kind of crap. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so that's my spiel. Find out what your USP is. Know what the commercial value of your work is. Know how it could benefit the publisher and know how it could complement the publisher's back catalog. Okay? So bing, 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 bing. If you could figure that out, you're fine. You're golden. And you could do anything you want. Okay? So with that said, keep buying my books, which I don't have around me right here. Keep buying my books. Links down below. Um, make sure you guys show up to the Anarchy Crew Only workshop this Friday at around in between three and four o'clock, sometime around there, where you are going to be writing a chapbook, a whole chapbook, done. What bing, what bam, what a boom, bing, done. So you got to sign up for the Anarchy Crew in order to do that. Links down below, and even if you're watching this video later, th there it'll be a replay of it on the um, the Anarchy Crew streams. Keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. Figure out your USB, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video, and if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.